going on there folks good evening it's the earth master here on this thursday evening september 1st 2022 it's about 8 40 p.m california time and uh, we got a 2.6 earthquake here out in the puerto rico area the latest earthquake there on the earthquake 3d globe uh, before we jump into earthquake activity kind of want to run over this little article that was put out here uh, by these uh, GPS folks. These are the. Uh, this is a company that kind of monitors and records uh, plate tectonic movement through GPS. Uh, they have a broad area of GPS stations all over the world, and uh, they kind of put out a map today, a little article, uh, a new map of strain across the western U.S. using GPS data. I'm not going to go over all of this here, though, but there is a, a couple maps here indicating uh, some specific areas where strain is the highest and the velocity mm per year. Uh, as you can see, of course, along the plate boundary, it only makes sense here across the uh, California region. Seeing a large uh, velocity uh, uptick right there. Also, a couple different um, map systems showing the uh, accumulated stress here in the area as well. And of course, up north off the coast of Oregon and California, uh, it is bright red. So we're looking at the uh, maximum um, built up strain, so to speak, in this area. And that's the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, looking across the rest of the plate boundary as well, um, quite a bit through the Bay Area and of course down south into the um, southern section of the San Andreas Fault. Now there's, uh, there's definitely a lot in here. I'm gonna read this for you guys, or uh, uh, include this link for you guys to check out in the uh, comment, uh, comment section below. And um, like I say, it's kind of cool. These guys do a pretty good job of um, GPS systems. And uh, there's a couple different sites here that uh, do the uh, GPS network, but uh, that's just one of them there. And they do quite a bit of uh, monitoring there throughout the region. Okay, gonna start off here with Tau Island. Not for sure if this was here last night um, or not. These are the seismograph stations that they installed here, the USGS did. I was just super tired last night, uh, burnt out from uh, a lot of different stuff yesterday, but notice uh, right around the Tau Volcano Island there in the American Samoa, they installed these uh, seismic stations there and um, make sure you guys can see that which you can uh, this is at least one of the 24 hour uh, recorded plots here still showing some earthquake activity uh, kind of like this a lot better than the uh, raspberry shake data system uh, which is kind of basically user defined uh, as far as the uh, as far as the public data goes this here is uh, a, a sophisticated seismograph station that uh, will pick up any earthquake activity and it looks like over the last 24 hours uh, definitely still seeing uh, some movement there around Tau Volcano Island or Tau Island uh, the uh, volcano there and roughly about the same on this map as well um, far as updates go there's not a whole lot on this everything is roughly about the same far as the ongoing earthquake swarm at the Tau Island volcano uh, no significant change in the past 24 hours and uh, the source of, of the earthquakes has not moved within the earth since beginning uh, let's see here so we're talking about preliminary data analysis suggests a wide area of possible earthquake locations extending from deep beneath the Tau Island to shallower depths of about uh, 10 kilometers to the north uh, here's where they mentioned that uh, it, has, it has not really moved that it's basically stayed in one spot far as the swarming goes no migration that is and uh, the source position has remained um, constant seismologists continue to examine data and refine locations uh, looks like in the past 24 hours 27 earthquakes reported there across the um, new islands and uh, still just kind of watching this play out and seeing what happens with the uh, volcano out there all right rest of the earthquake map here Looking at uh, the USGS activity, uh, got a little activity up in the Aleutian Trench here. Uh, 4.7 earthquake at about 54 kilometers deep into this region. A uh, little spotty activity throughout the, the uh, remainder of the Western Pacific here. Um, some movement outside of the Manila area, but uh, overall things just kind of uh, not super active today in this area. Um, even this region down here in the Tonga area, 
Uh, this is some activity that kicked up earlier this afternoon, but no significant movement taking place here in this area yet. Uh, we are starting to see though some, some of those quakes get down there into the trench at about 572 kilometers deep for a 4.2. Not a large uptick whatsoever, um, but uh, a little bit of movement seems like in that area over the last 24 hours. Not a whole lot throughout the South America region. Only a couple spotty earthquakes and some older movement at that. Puerto Rico Trench got some activity in a little linear fashion here, kind of stretching across the Puerto Rico area up to the Puerto Rico Trench. A couple twos and threes. And uh, this morning we had a couple fours around the uh, uh, Santiago Dominican Republic area. No further activity to note there in that region since then. Uh, one area that's still rocking and rolling is the Texas area. Uh, of course, we had a 4.6 earthquake earlier this morning in the, uh, well, near the Pecos, Texas area. And we had another four pointer uh, kick off in that little swarm uh, just recently here in the last couple hours. So things are continuing to build up out there in the Texas region. Now, this area does see uh, quite a bit of. Uh, Oh, some uh, injection wells and fracking operations out here with some, some of these little wastewater ponds and whatnot. You can see them pretty clear as day uh, through satellite imagery. And the, some of them are old, some of them are new. Either way, uh, a lot of earthquakes out there in that oil field in Texas today. Um, up into the Yellowstone area, a couple earthquakes being listed here on the map. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone overview real quick of the raw data. And uh, for day number seven, as far as seismic activity goes here at Yellowstone, that's still kind of continuing, but noticing a little die-off of activity here over the last 24 hours, not looking as condensed in terms of the uh, multitudes of earthquakes out here. And in fact, only, uh, I only see uh, maybe a couple small ones here within the last three hours or so. Um, so might be getting ready to taper down uh, and uh, completely disappear. We'll see uh, how tonight plays out and tomorrow. Uh, the rest of the area across the region here, one earthquake outside of the uh, uh, Chalice, Idaho area off the Sawtooth Fault system here. Looks like it. Hold on a second here. Kind of looks like they've added a couple... Uh, a couple. There's a Sawtooth right here, but kind of looks like they've added a couple new fault systems within this area. Uh, this is actually on the, uh, kind of looks like the Lost River Fault, just off of it, uh, a 2.4. Not a whole lot going on throughout the Sawtooth Fault system there today, so. Uh, little spotty activity throughout the Pacific Northwest, not that big of a deal. Northern California, a couple spotty earthquakes here, also up in the, the uh, northern Nevada region. And uh, some movement, again, along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. One earthquake down here in the uh, Diablo Range. Looks like a 2.0 at 20 kilometers, and uh, of course some activity around the creeping se or the uh, yeah the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. And uh, wow, just not a whole lot happening throughout the western coast right now. A uh, little activity down south, west of the Salton City area. Uh, just some microquakes, but uh, overall things are just kind of little on the spotty side, and a little bit too eerie and quiet right now. Uh, throughout the Big Island, most of the activity confined here to Pahala and some activity around Kilauea Volcano and Mauna Loa. Not a whole lot of significant change there at, at the uh, volcanoes. Uh, sometimes these uh, little microquakes pop up here and there on occasion, and that's kind of what they're doing tonight and over the last 24 hours. The trimmer map from tonight looks like uh, about 97 epicenters. It's a pretty good drop compared to... Oh, what do we have yesterday? A couple hundred at least. I think we had 300 or so trimmers along the Cascadia. Right now, 97 epicenters of trimmer, mostly confined up here to the Vancouver Island ranges in the uh, northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, a quick look at the earthquake scan to map here. Uh, looks like a little activity kicking up onto the... Uh, Oh, what do we got here? It looks like the Pacific side of the uh, plate boundary here between the Juan de Fuca and the Pacific plate. A little 2.8 kicking up here. Uh, not a whole lot going on along the northern end of the Cascadia right now. And some spotty activity. It looks like some microquakes throughout the region. One earthquake away up here along the Yukon border. Uh, looks like a 3.0 at uh, 5.4 kilometers there for that earthquake. 
Rest, the rest of uh, Canada out here looks a little quiet. Nothing showing up here within the last couple days. Uh, except for that 4.2. That one kicked up here a, a couple days ago, way up north. Uh, let's see what else we got. The space weather activity kind of uh, dying down. But we do have a G1 potential G2 class storm kicking up here on September 4th. And this is due to the coronal hole activity. Number 20, uh, which is facing us directly. Uh, I don't think we can get any more square dead on than that. A lot of times we see the coronal holes up here uh, or on the southern part of the equator. But this one here is kind of a, uh, on, on both sides here. Directly in the center disk of the sun. And uh, that's going to line us up with a bullseye shot of the high speed solar wind that is flowing from this coronal hole on the September 4th time frame uh g2 class storm expected 85 percent chance at the higher latitudes and 40 around the mid latitudes so we will wait for that to pop up lucky folks there to our north and uh, maybe down to the tier states or the uh, northern tier states could see um, some of those auroras kick up we'll have to watch that pretty closely solar flare activity 75 percent chance of a c flare 25 uh, percent for m flare and x flare around five percent chance uh, the sunspot activity is kind of dying down currently. 3089 is still there, but it has not sparked off anything uh, at all uh, for that matter. Um, here's a look at the solar x-ray flux, uh, flux chart. Uh, only seen a very low sea flare earlier today. But since then, things are just really mellow currently. Not a whole lot popping off there. And far as potential goes, 3092, that has been named the new sunspot over here. Uh, looks like it may be growing a little bit. We'll watch that in, in the uh, coming days. Looks like it's got a beta class, uh, magnetic class there. And it's in its uh, maybe possibly uh, growing stage. So we'll watch that pretty closely. And uh, see if we can't get any further activity here. Uh, possibly towards the weekend once that thing rotates into view. But there is that large coronal hole. Uh, it is facing Earth. It looks like a uh, high speed solar wind stream is predicted to reach Earth beginning September 4th. Geomagnetic storming reaching the moderate G2 levels will be possible. Roar Sky, uh, Roar Sky Watchers at middle to high latitude should be alert beginning Sunday. Woohoo! Awesome. Awesomeness, right? Uh, let's see what else is out there, folks. I think that's about it. We got, uh, again, some hot temperatures coming into California, unfortunately. And, um,. Yeah, it's definitely not good. I'm definitely not looking forward to this uh, this event that's going on here. This heat event, record heat event. Uh, quick look here at the EMSC model across the rest of the flat scale model here. Shows roughly about the same, uh, same type of earthquake activity here. Same numbers uh, in terms of the comparison to the USGS. And uh, let's zoom in a little bit, see if we got any major swarms anywhere in the lower magnitudes. Uh, Chile area and the Middle America Trench looks pretty condensed here with a lot of activity, but uh, no major movement to report there yet. Uh, and some activity, it looks like, throughout the Indonesia area and also down into or uh, up into the Philippines. Uh, New Zealand area showing a couple lower magnitude earthquakes there. Looks like they've had a couple threes here. Uh, over the last 24 hours but uh, at this point just kind of kind of watching things seeing how things play out um, again it just looks a, just looks a little bit quiet we do have a um, a 4.7 coming in here just on the USGS map right now into the uh, northern end of the Java Trench uh, somewhat deep at about 62 kilometers uh, so we could we could be seeing things starting to light up pretty nicely over here uh, with all this deeper movement that we've been seeing uh, over the past 24, 48 hours in these areas. So we'll see how it plays out, folks. All right. I hope everyone has a good night. Uh, again, stay safe out there. We will chat you guys a little bit later on tomorrow sometime. Peace out.